Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is James with Noise Barriers. Thanks for attending our webinar today. We're going to be presenting on the How It's Made series, The Life of a Noise Barriers Quiet Perf Order from PO to Install. This is a continuation in our series we're going to be doing, talking through all of our different product lines. We've covered door orders so far, and I think maybe even our Quiet Line series. Today, we're going to be hitting Quiet Perf. Again, this is our quiet perf absorption panel line. We're gonna be talking through a couple different sections. We're gonna start with uh, quoting an order and receiving a purchase order. And then we're gonna do an overview of our order flow. We've covered this in other webinars um, and in some of our trainings, but we're gonna to touch on it again today to make sure that's fresh in everybody's mind. We're then gonna talk through our typical engineered submittals, the release process for getting the order into the shop, all the different stages in fabricating a quiet perf panel, the creating and shipment of those panels, and then the installation on site. We're going to talk through uh, starting with a purchase order here. So ideally, we would have the quote number listed somewhere on our purchase order. This helps us tie the purchase order uh, through our system from accounting to engineering to the salesman to make sure that all the correct documents and costs are allocated to the correct job and quote number. It also is very helpful when on the PO, we have a list of what's being purchased. I've seen some POs that actually include our noise barriers quote, uh, language something like four by eight panels, uh, 17 three by eight panels. Again, it just helps us list out and describe exactly what we're buying. So that again, we're making sure that we're charging the cost correctly and we enter everything into our system correct. We've been trying to include freight estimates in a range. Um, I know this is a little difficult to itemize onto a PO. What we've seen a lot of customers do and what's been working in the past is they provide on their PO the high range of the freight estimate they've received from their salesman. That way, in case there's an overage from the low side and it lands somewhere in between, at least we're covered by estimating on the high side. Um, that's something that you can discuss with your individual salesmen like myself, Sal, John, or Carl we can work to a uh, common measure, but I, I've seen a lot of the POs include the high side of the freight estimate. And then any uh, applicable tax, whether it be uh, the city or state tax uh, that this product is shipping to. So once we have that purchase order, we're ready to proceed to the next step in our order flow process. This chart has been shared on numerous webinars. It's just critical to our process here at Noise Barriers. And we really find that it's useful to cover in these webinars so that everybody's always on the same page and we're all using the same language when discussing a project as it flows through the life uh, from order to shipment. So we're right at that green bubble on the top, or excuse me, the gray bubble that says receive new order. After we receive that new order in PO, we now enter a yellow sales order process where that job is all entered into our CRM system all the data about when it was quoted, who it was quoted to, how many revisions it was, what market it was entered into, whether it be our architectural or industrial, what product line, all of that data is entered into our CRM. And then we create a budget uh, sort of sheet in a job folder. And then we transition to a orange handoff meeting there in the top right corner. Now that handoff meeting is an internal conversation with project management and sales to make sure that our project managers, our designers, and the salesmen are all on the same page. Everybody understands the scope, everybody understands the timeline, and there's no questions or confusion about what's to be provided. Our project managers are gonna end that meeting by sending an email to the customer, introducing themselves and letting them know that submittals are on their way and uh, usually giving some sort of lead time indication for those submittals. While the submittals are being created, the project managers are going to create all the different suborders for that job. So for a quiet perf order, you'll most likely have panels and then some sort of joiner or anchoring method onto the wall that you're gonna be putting these panels onto. So likely they'll create two or three suborders, again for the panels, the joiners, and then there'll probably be a line item for freight in there. And we'll separate our costs into those three bins. That way we can track the order through the shop and make sure that everything's being accounted for appropriately. While that all is happening, our designers will have drawn the product 
and we're ready to send to our customer for approval. At this point, Noise Barriers considers this order out for approval. OFA is the abbreviation we use. Again, OFA means it's now out for approval. It's in our customer's hands. Uh, barring any sort of revisions or additional information needed, we're going to assume today that those drawings come back approved. They're going to send a copy of the signed drawings to our project manager and release us to fabrication. At that time, we're going to consider the job TBR to be released. Now, just because the submittals are signed and the customer approves them, we still have a few days or a little bit of time there where we need to basically create an entire engineering release for the shop. Now, the submittals are a very high level overview, floor plans, elevations, things like that. But what the shop's going to need to know is a bill of material, uh, where are those folds going to be in the panels, what lengths are the joiners made to, how many anchors do we need. All those specific items are created in our engineering release. So we'll create an advanced bill of material or an A-bomb if there's any long lead time items. That could be aluminum, could be uh, uh, maybe a particular type of powder coat that's needed for these quiet perf panels. And we're going to send that to the shop as soon as possible so that those long lead time items can be procured. We're then going to create all those build sheets I talked about. Those are the sheets that the operators are going to use to fold and shear and uh, assemble the panels. And then we're going to do a manufacturing review internally to make sure that everything looks right and create that sh full shop release and send it into the shop to be fabricated. At that time, the shop code we're going to be using now is called RTS, released to the shop, RTS. And that code basically allows the shop to look at that release package, estimate the schedule and the capacity for the shop, and plop it in on a date, and we're gonna call that the promised ship date. And what we're working towards these last couple of months is locking in that schedule to try to minimize as many pushouts and delays as possible, and locking that schedule as we get closer and closer to that ship date. While the product is being manufactured in our shop, our project managers will likely send you an email asking you for a shipping letter that provides all the necessary information for the shipment that could be site address, site conditions, is it on the first floor or the third floor, is there a ramp, is there a fork truck available to unload the crate, things like that. And then we're going to send you uh, a copy if you're scheduling the freight yourself, the weights and dimensions of the crates that you can come and organize pickup, otherwise we'll ship it ourselves. At that time the product will ship, you guys will be able to install it yourselves or if Noise Beers is coordinating the install, we'll meet the product on site and we'll provide the installation services. I know that's a lot of words and a lot of uh, description and in-depth information on one slide, but it really is critical uh, here at Noise Beers that everybody is using the same language regarding the different steps in the process. It just makes more for a more seamless uh, and transparent process so that everybody knows where the job is at any given time. Here's a set of example submittal drawings. You're going to see, um, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to see on a quiet perf job, they're technically not the most complex uh, product or materials that Noise Beers provides in our uh, long uh, litany of different doors, sliding doors, and barrier walls, which are a little more complicated. This is a more simplistic product. So you'll see a few elevation shots, um, and you'll see some detailed drawings showing fasteners and uh, wall mounting uh, practices. We're going to lay out on these slides or on these submittal drawings, you're going to see uh, notes regarding what material type, and you're also going to be seeing what type of perf pattern we're using, if the panels are flat or V-ridged, et cetera. All the information is going to be listed on the submittal. So you can see in this order, uh, this is for, I believe, a water spray off room at a military base. They're going to be lining I believe it's raw panels, galvanized panels inside the spray room uh, because the pressure washer gets quite loud during use. So you have elevation A that shows a long wall there with uh, 38 inch or 36 inch panels butted up to each other. And then on elevation B, you can see that there appears to be some sort of door there and then panels on the other wall. Um, and all this is laid out in our typical noise barriers, uh, standard submittal layout with all the dimensions. 
There are those additional documents I mentioned that show the uh, different elevations of the panels, as well as the fastening and mounting uh, methods. So you can see how those panels are going to clip into or sit inside of those joiners and then be fastened inside the wall. And you'll also get a, a little cut sheet or a detail showing the joiner dimensions as well. Um, in this case, it looks like there's a two inch offset that keeps the panel two inches from the wall. Um, this is based on an acoustic uh, application or based on acoustics that they wanted that, um, not an aesthetic uh, sort of uh, requirement. So we're gonna provide that for them. Now we're gonna talk through a little bit about the release that we uh, created. This is the cover sheet of it. The actual shop release is multiple pages. Um, like I mentioned, it's gonna contain a cover sheet. It's gonna have that parts list, any bill of materials, the shop drawings for each individual component that show how it's formed and sheared and bent, uh, what type of powder coat is needed, and any additional information is gonna be in that shop release. Again, it's usually uh, for a quiet perf order, probably anywhere from five to 10 pages long, depending on how many panels. But we're gonna make sure we check any box, boxes there in the center that show the special remarks, powder coating, uh, if there's any sort of assembly, what sort of inspection is needed prior to shipment, is it crated or boxed, um, customer picking it up or are we shipping it, all that information can be found in the shop release. And this is that in that process where it is uh, to be released and it's about to switch into release to the shop or RTS. The production process is very typical uh, for quiet proof panels like it is for all of our other product lines. We're gonna have a fully engineered package and we're gonna have daily stand-ups in the shop that talk through all the jobs in the schedule to see where they are. We do fill on a first come first serve basis and the shop is very busy right now. We are absolutely slammed with door and panel work. Um, so we, it does take some coordination and some information from our customers as soon as possible on when they're going to want that order so that we can hold that spot in the schedule for them because it is first come, first serve. This is just a nice picture here. You can see some exterior quiet perf panels, two rows, probably six feet high or so each bay. Um, and then we have cutouts that the shop did prior to shipments that those looks like little uh, lighting fixtures can be installed, which is a nice little touch. Raw materials for the quiet perf panels are typically sheet steel, but as since they're outdoor applications often, we do do G90, we do stainless steel panels, and we also do a lot of aluminum. We keep a lot of the standard width material, like 36 inch and 48 inch wide by eight foot, nine foot, 10 foot, 12 foot in stock. But again, we use it and uh, allocated on a first come first serve basis. So we might have quite a bit of material in stock, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that job can ship within two weeks. Um, that material might already be claimed by another job. So again, it's important to let us know as soon as you can when your ship date is required and get those approvals back to us. But we're gonna stock all this material and we're gonna pull it as needed to manufacture the job. So on a quiet perf panel, we are just having to uh, shear and typically break the panel. I suppose you could have to punch the material like I showed earlier where you had a punch out where the electrical was coming through the panel. But more often than not, these are long lengths of panels uh, with very few cutouts or punch outs in them. So we're gonna shear the length and width as needed and we're gonna punch any penetrations that are required. And we're also going to shear and fold any of those joiners. So that would be on the top. Um, some sort of uh, J or Z as we call them. We're gonna shear and break all of those as well in the shop. So on the left, you can see our Amada. Um, and on the right, you can see our shear. We've got multiple shear and breaks on the panel line, always working uh, on either just standard HP modular panels or on our quiet perf product line. Panel skins and joiners are gonna be folded. Again, here you can see uh, these guys are feeding this material in to be sheared. These panels, again, like I said, are typically long linear lengths. We can fold and make triangular, uh, octagonal, uh, strange dimension panels to fit around wall constraints or site conditions. We do make a lot of different custom panels. More often than not, they're two inches or four inches deep. We call them our NB2 or NB4, very simple. And those are filled with fiberglass. So after they're done shearing it, 
they're going to bag some fiberglass and put it inside. Or sometimes the customers don't need it bagged and we're going to lay the fiberglass in loose. And then we're going to put end caps on if they're called for. Uh, you also could call that four sides folded. Depending on what sort of joiner you're using, you can also get away with just two sides folded. And you can slide the panels right inside of their joiner. And then their straps are added if you're dealing with some a panel perhaps uh, 10 foot to 12 foot long uh, and you're dealing with some thin sheet metal like 18 gauge it might get a little wobbly so the shop will add a few little metal straps onto the back to make sure nothing falls out and that fiberglass doesn't start to seep into the uh, slip out of the panel so to say if the panels are powder coated you're going we're going to send them down our line it's located in our plant here we're going to hang them just like we would a modular panel and they can be primed or powder coated any sort of custom color. Um, they look really nice coming out of the line there. You can see in the bottom right, uh, powder coated a nice white color. Um, these quiet perk panels look really nice up on a wall in an interior or exterior application. And having them powder coated really does add a little bit of flair. They can be shipped raw. Again, for exterior uses, we're going to want to have something like G90 um, or some other sort of material perhaps. Uh, so we don't have any rusting or corrosion over time. We're gonna bring them to our crating area. You can see in the top left, we like to keep it open, clean and organized. We only cut materials just in time. So we're gonna have all the raw material there and then we're gonna cut and build a crate custom to the product that we're shipping. So if we're sending two inch panels, say, we're gonna probably be able to fit 20 of them inside of a crate, stack 10 and then 10 on top of it. And we'll close up and band the crate. Uh, and if you're shipping four inch panels, you'll probably only be able to get 10 inside of a crate. Uh, otherwise, five on top of five there. And again, all this is going to be crated, wrapped, um, and labeled and marked for arrival on site. So now the product is crated and shipped. You've got a shipping letter, like we talked about, either sent to our customer or our rep. That's going to have all the information we need to ship this load on site and for the customer to receive it. We're going to need this information prior to shipment. We always require it. If the customer is picking them up themselves, then we will provide them with the weights and dims so that they can coordinate um, a pickup at our dock. And then installation. For quiet perf panels, it really is as simple as it looks. A lot of our customers are installing that bottom piece of uh, Z angle there at the bottom. You can see in the bottom right picture um, down here in the right bottom right picture on the left hand corner you can see that z profile we're going to sit that joiner all along the bottom of the wall and fasten it in place with some uh, anchors we provide then you're going to stand the panel up on top and you have a j up at the top holding that top lip in place and again you can either uh, depending on what sort of lengths you have you can either put the j down and then install the panel and then put the j on top excuse me, the Z on bottom, then the panel, then the J on top. Or if you have uh, access to the sides, you can put both the J and the Z onto the wall first, and then you can slide the panel in from the side. Uh, it all depends on the site conditions. We also have some sort of floating attachment options. You can see in this left-hand picture, they're offset from the wall, but you also don't have a J or a Z in this bottom left picture holding them up. So you sort of had this nice aesthetic floating panel look. Again, that's just made from creating a different type of J and a Z and having some uh, straps on the back of the panels to hold them all in place. And those panels, it's hard to see because they're powder coated white, but they are formed with the V ridge. So we can make flat panels or we can make V ridge panels. And again, that V is just, we're gonna hit it inside the brake press every six inches or so and create little 15 degree divots along the panel. I think I have another picture on the next slide that'll show you it in some better lighting. Yep, here on the left-hand side, you can see those little Vs that we create there uh, using the brake press. And again, you can see this is, uh, we have some interior applications on this slide. It looks like inside of a uh, engine or a muffler test cell here exhaust test cell and then on this side we have a uh, industrial plant i believe this is in a wastewater treatment facility you have some different types of pumps and crane access up on the top and again they've installed the quiet perf panels along the shop walls and then this picture in blue here 
just a little fun fact, a little trivia fact. This is our old shop in Libertyville, Illinois. We had these quiet perk panels installed on our entryway foyer. It had a big, big open 20 foot ceiling and installing these panels really helped the echo in that front lobby area as visitors or guests came in uh, to meet with our staff. So we, they do help in an architectural setting as well or in an office, uh, our front office of a plant even. Well, that is our quiet perf webinar, learning about the uh, life cycle of a quiet perf product from PO to installation. Again, my name is James Thomas with Noise Beers. If you have any questions or information, you can send an email or give me a call at the contact located on that screen, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Again, thank you everybody for your time this afternoon. Have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm.